This is Saurabh, and you're listening to my favorite talk show, The Weekly Show with Aditya. So one thing that digital cable networks or what one calls OTT has done to Indian TV shows is that they have now been brought par with the numerous TV shows in other parts of the world. Gone are the days of the sleep inducing soap operas. There, there would be 300 episodes but there would be no quality. Now it's the other way around. A limited episode series that's 10 to 12 episodes but the quality is throughout each of these episodes. The writers, the directors, the producers, everybody knows what they are doing. The quality in terms of the camera work, the script is in one word organic. I have seen many of such digital cable TV shows. For me, they are nothing more than TV shows, though a majority likes to call them OTT. Whether you watch it on platforms or digital cable networks such as Netflix, Amazon or any other such associated platforms, it's still a TV show at the end. Yes, web-based, but it's still a TV show. Compare it to the other TV shows that are there on the usual platforms, that is the traditional cable networks, and their story is usually limited to the mundane relationships which appeal to the banal nature of human fantasy. That's what these TV shows are, trying to show the perfect familial relationships or the over-the-top relationships between various facets in a family. And after a while, one doesn't want to watch such egregious TV shows which are sleep-inducing, boring, monotonous and looks as if time has stopped when you watch such TV shows because they take us into a fantastical world. Ever since the likes of Family Man, Sacred Games, Breed and other such TV shows were produced, they have changed the nature of what an Indian TV show means. There is no misdirect as far as the relationships are concerned. These TV shows focus on the plot. There is a beginning, middle and an end. They just don't go on and on with no end in sight, giving us some fantastical notions of what actual relationships mean. While the older TV shows such as the ones which deal with familiar relationships are nothing more than fairy tales, the current ones are an amalgamation of truth and fiction. Let me give you a few examples. The season 2 of the TV show Breed, it deals with something which we have heard often but never seen through the lens. The makers have dealt with the idea of MPD, that is Multiple Personality Disorder, brought in the concept of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde into the protagonist. The protagonist in this particular show isn't a stereotype but has shown to be real and individualistic and not the stereotypes we have been fed with for years. For example, the creators of Family Man finished season 1 in such a way that they left us unanswered questions as to what will happen in season 2. Will the antagonist be caught? Will the protagonist finally get the bad guys? Here also the makers deal with the idea of familial relationships but they are not stereotypical. They are not the pseudo perfect relationships we have been fed for years and that kind of pseudo relationships has also forced us to think in that pseudo manner. Breathe is a story of the struggle of the protagonist dealing with the multiple personality disorder. In Family Man, 
the world hangs in balance here the protagonist must deal with a dark foe to save his homeland in season 2 shall bring out the many unanswered questions the show sacred games for example worked on the premise of flashback technique and the conversation between the dead antagonist and the protagonist once again as just a few days to save the nation from a disaster using flashback and narrative techniques we see as to how the protagonist who is a police detective goes back and looks at how he is connected to this dead antagonist how his father also has some connection with this particular individual in the past and how those decisions in the past have led to the circumstances which will eventually put the nation in danger one aspect these tv shows still have to work on especially the ones which are concerned with the law enforcement side of the story is that the law enforcement procedure is still not shown in the manner they should be it's as if the law enforcement side of the story is mocked heavily by the writers just when the story is reaching the plot point the climax law enforcement side of it completely dismantles the story because of the attitude of how the police and the law enforcement officials work is shown it's as if nothing has changed from the previous stereotypical tv shows relating to law enforcement let's take the example of the tv show special ops but also flashback techniques are used when a uh, intelligence analyst is questioned over how he has dealt with catching the bad guys and how he narrates the story to the two bureaucrats who are more concerned with the money being spent on the agents who are scouting around the world then actually information gathering the subtle and the mocking nature of the way they have been portrayed as if uncaring the heavy files in front of them more concerned that I have to finish this investigation for the sake of investigation without actually empathizing with how intelligence officials deal with things around the world how they gather information how they put themselves in strife that was one of the subtle messages in this particular tv show but also the one which would have gone probably unnoticed was the conversation between the two bureaucrats who were more concerned with tea and snacks and just not being bothered about the actual investigation rather they were more concerned about clocking the hours finishing the report even if that meant telling that intelligence officer that whatever you are doing if it's expensive we cannot give you the right to pen government money also how this intelligence official had to deal with these two at the same time lead a team of young intelligence analyst and agents who were hell bent on it's capturing the antagonist in this case that is why quality precedes quantity eight episodes work better than 300 episodes because for eight episodes you are able to focus on the quality of the tv show and or dividing the tv shows into season which come after a gap so that the viewers know what to expect if 300 episodes come without a break no real movement of the protagonist with no real change in the protagonist if they deal with the same stereotypical mundane relationships then 300 episodes do not work for me T.S. Eliot waste land. If there were water and no rock, if there were rock and also water and water a spring, a pool among the rock, 
if there were the sound of water only not the sisada and dry grass singing but sound of water over a rock where the hermit thrush drip drop drip drop 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 but there is no water who is the third who walks always beside you when i count there are only you and i together but when i look ahead up the white road there is always another one walking beside you gliding wrapped in a brown mantle hooded i do not know whether a man or a woman but who is that on the other side of you what is that sound high in the air murmur of maternal lamentation who are those hooded hordes swarming over endless plains stumbling in cracked earth ringed by the flat horizon only what is the city over the mountains cracks and reforms and bursts in the violent air falling towers jerusalem athens alexandria vienna london and real a woman drew her long black hair out tight and fiddled whisper music on those strings and bags with baby faces in the violet light whistled and beat their wings and crawled head downward down a blackened wall and upside down in air were towers tolling reminiscent bells that kept the hours and voices singing out of empty cisterns and exhausted wells in this decayed hole among the mountains in the faint moonlight the grass is singing over the tumbled graves about the chapel there is the empty chapel only the winds home it has no windows and the door swings dry bones can harm no one only a cock stood on the roof tree coco rico coco rico in a flash of lightning then a damp gust bringing rain homer's iliad he sent them off with the strict order ringing in their ears against their will the two men made their way along the breaking surf of the barren salt sea and reached the myrmidon shelters and their ships they found him beside his lodge and black hull seated grimly and achilles took no joy when he saw the two approaching they were afraid they held the king in awe and stood there silent not a word to achilles not a question but he sends it all in his heart their fear that charged and broke the silence for them welcome couriers good heralds of zeus and men here come closer you have done nothing to me you are not to blame no one but agamemnon he is the one who sent you for briseis go petroclus prince bring out the girl and hand her to them so that they can take her back but let them both bear witness to my loss in the face of blissful gods and mortal men in the face of that unbending ruthless king if the day should come when the armies need me to save their ranks from ignominious stark defeat the man is raving with all the murderous fury in his heart he lacks the sense to see a day behind a day ahead and safeguard the achaeans battling by the ships patroclus obeyed his great friend's command he led briseis in all her beauty from the lodge and handed her over to the men to take her away to walk back along the argive ships while she trailed on behind reluctant every step but achilles wept and slipping away from his companions far apart 
sat down on the beach of the heaving grey sea and scanned the endless ocean. Reaching out his arms again and again, he prayed to his dear mother, Mother, you gave me life, short as that life will be, so at least Olympian Zeus, thundering upon high, should give me honor, but now he gives me nothing. Atreus's son Agamemnon, for all his far-flung kingdoms, the man disgraces me, seizes and keeps my prize. He tears her away himself. So he wept and prayed, and his noble mother heard him, seated near her father, the old man of the sea in the salt green depths. Suddenly up she rose from the churning surf like mist and settling down beside him as he wept stroked Achilles gently, whispering his name, My child, why in tears? What sorrow has touched your heart? Tell me, please, don't harbor it deep inside you. We must share it all. T.G. Woodhouse, stiff upper lip jeeves. A minute or two later, Spood returned with the most of the stuffing removed from his person. I seem to have done you an injustice, Wooster, he said, and I was amazed that he had it in him to speak so meekly. The Woosters are always magnanimous. We do not crush the vanquished beneath the iron heel. Oh, was the thing there all right? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, it was. Ah, well, we all make mistakes. I could have sworn it had gone. But wasn't the door locked? Yes. Reminds you of one of those mystery stories, doesn't it? Where there's a locked room with no windows and blow it if one fine morning you don't find a millionaire inside with a dagger of oriental design sticking in his wish bone got some oil on your nose. Oh, have I? He said, feeling. Now we have got it on your cheek. I'd go and join Bartholomew in the bath tub if I were you. I will thank you, Wooster. Not at all, Spoot, or rather, sit cup. Don't spare the soap. I suppose there's nothing that braces one more thoroughly than the spectacle of the forces of darkness stubbing their toe and the heart was light as I made my way to the house. What with this and what with that? It was as though a great weight had rolled off me. Birds sang, insects buzzed and I felt that what they were trying to say was all is well Bertram has come through. But a thing I have often noticed is that when I have got something off my mind, it pretty nearly always happens that fate sidles up and shoves on something else, as if curious to see how much the traffic will bear. It went on its act on the present occasion, feeling that I needed something else to worry about its back on its hands and got down to it, allowing Madeline Bassett to corner me as I was passing down the hall. Even if she had been her normal soupy self, she would have been the last person I wanted to have a word with. But this she was far from being. Something had happened to remove the droopiness and her eyes had a gleam in them which filled me with a nameless fear. She was obviously old steamed up for some reason and it was plain that what she was about to say was not going to make the last of the boosters clap his hands in glee and start chanting Hosannas like Cherubim and Seraphim as if I've got the names right. A moment later she revealed what it was that was eating her, dishing it out without what I believe is called Preamble. I'm furious with Augustus, she said, and my heart stood still. It was as if the totally tars spectre 
if there was one had laid an icy hand on it. Why what's happened? He was very rude to Roderick. This seemed incredible. Nobody but an all-in wrestling champion would be rude to a fellow as big as Spood. Surely not. I mean, he was very rude about Roderick. He said he was sick and tired of seeing him clumping about the place as if it belonged to him and he hadn't got a home of his own. And if daddy had an ounce more sense than a billiard ball, he would charge him rent. He was most offensive. My age stood stiller. It is not stretching the facts to say that I was appalled and all of a duda. It just showed. I was telling myself what a vegetarian diet can do to a chap, changing him in a flash from a soft boiled to a hard boiled egg. I have no doubt the poet Shelley's circle noticed the same thing with the poet Shelley. For more awesome content, tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with Aditya.